Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, on the net since 2000 and still going strong. If you feel like you're not getting the real news, if you feel like you're not connected spiritually, you have found your home. Maria covers a wide range of topics as only a snarky New Yorker can. Straight up, no chaser. No censorship, no corporate sponsors, thus true freedom of speech. Your subscription gives you unlimited access as a member of the smartest audience on earth. Relax and enjoy the education. Now here's Maria. Uh, Good morning world, Maria here, alive and kicking. Welcome to Awaken with Maria and Monica. That fresh breeze of fresh air that I can take a break from the news from. And uh, we have a lot we want to talk about today. And I want to thank, before I get started, I want to thank Marina Lopez for her donation this morning. She's one of uh, one of my very special listeners. And I really appreciate her and all the rest of you know who you are. Anyway, good morning, Monica. Hey, Maria. I don't know how you do it. I was listening to your broadcast yesterday and it's like, Wow. I mean, wow. You are pretty damn strong, I'm telling you, because I would never be able to do your job. <laughs> I, I guess I, I must I guess I volunteered to do it. So I guess all those uh, all those study habits I learned growing up as a Jehovah's Witness came in handy to do this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jehovah Witness, really? Right, we, or oh as gosh. we used to say, wit- well, you know, Witness. Like, I, go ahead, I'm sorry. As we used to say, Witness, we didn't even see the accident. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, will That's t- hilarious. I will tell you this, though. We learned so much about uh, how to really study, how to really read for comprehension, how to speak to the public, how mm. to take notes. And the truth of the matter is, I really don't think I could do what I do without that upbringing. Okay, there you so go. so for anybody listening, and I know I have a lot of recovering Catholics and and so many different religious ex religious <laughs> people, you know, try to look at whatever little good you might have actually gotten out of all that indoctrination. The other well, good you know, thing I, is, is you know, it gave me a good ba- basis of Bible knowledge, so I can argue with all the Bible fanatics online who have never even read right. the Bible. Well, you know, I am an, an ordained minister, but I'm a metaphysician and I'm spiritualist, so I got, I uh, went to the right place. But before that, this is hilarious. I I was raised a Catholic, and then when I had classes at age 19 years old, I had three nuns and a mother superior come to my class, and they said, "You know way too much about uh, about spirituality. You need to leave the Catholic Church." Huh. So I always laugh when I tell people. I said, "The mother superior told me to leave the Catholic Church because I knew." So much about so many other faiths that it was time for me to spread my wings and expand. So when people argue with me, they, I said, "Hey, Mother Superior told me to leave." Right, <laughs> my, Mother Superior jumped the gun. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. And the, and the other three nuns agreed with her, and they said, "Yeah, yet 19 years old, you're an old old spirit." So you know, and that was back in 1970. Wow. Well, you know, at least you got kicked out, you know, in a, in a proper way. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> my gifts always got me the uh, the title of the Antichrist from my Italian Catholic neighbors. They used to call me the Mala Christiana when I used to walk home from school. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, because I knew everything everybody was thinking and doing, you know, and I guess that yeah. was unsettling in the 1950s to a lot of old Italian Catholics. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I can imagine. Anyway, here we are. We're in a new year, and mm-hmm. I know we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, resolutions, uh, yeah. but I also wanted to start the show with the fact, and you're the expert in numerology, so I have to hand it over to you, that we're in a three-year today uh, as far as numerology. It, what does that mean? Well, the you know, even though we're amid a lot of, of chaos in the appearance, in the world of appearances, these things have to change. Like, you almost have to go through, you know, fire to make the steel stronger, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's what's happening right now because as I just, I turned on the news yesterday. Of course, I listened to your broadcast in the morning, which is, to me, a delight because you tell it like it is. And these other people are like, well, this might happen or this might happen. They're always speculating because 
they can't say anything for certain, and then they give you their stupid opinions, which to me, they don't matter. Right. Um, and so I turned on the news because my mother called me. She says, see what's going on in the U.K. and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no. So I, I was listening to that, and then I see all this chaos everywhere and then pulling out of NATO and yada, yada, yada. And so I thought, you know what? All of this stuff is happening for us to become stronger. And with respect to the fact that we've got into a new universal year, it's called the universal year. Now, everybody has their own personal year, and you can um, figure out, you know, what your personal year is by knowing the mathematics of it. Of course, you know, I teach lessons, and by the way, anyone that's listening, if you ever want to take private lessons from me, I offer them at a very low, low price. And so just email me, and I'll send you the list of topics that I cover, but one of them is numerology, which is extremely, extremely accurate. There's no... Nothing, you know, uh, fake about it. it. It's all very, very accurate. So I love studying numbers, and it's a lot of fun anyway. The three year, every number has a flip side of the coin, the positive and the negative. So looking at the positive of the three year, it is one that brings about the development of intuition, expression, creativity, communication, good communication, and it also brings up, and, and, you know, like uh, a lightness, a feeling of play, fun, having a good time. That's the positive of three for the universe. So the universe is going to bring up all the ugly so it can clear out, kind of like having a great bowel movement. You know, you feel really good afterwards. <laughs> it's like you get rid of all that shit, and then you feel like, wow, I feel like I lost five pounds. This feels euphoric. So it's getting rid of and it's purging a lot of the ugly right now, which is what we're going through at this point. And then it's going to clear it out so that we have like the feeling of, ah. Oh. So the flip side, the negative side of the three, and that depends upon our own state of mind, has to do with the complete reversal. Emotional roller coaster, going from depression to feeling okay to going back to feeling uncertain and, and self-doubt and feelings of negativity and arguments because that's the negative side of good communication is arguing. So it's very paramount this particular time and this month, and because we're in a four-month, this is going to help us because the four-month, the way you figure out a four-month is this. Universal year is a three, January is a one, three plus one equals four. So January is the opportunity for us to get it all together. So a lot's going to surface in this year, and we go into February, which is a five, because February is a two, universal three year is five. Five is the number of change. So that's when you're going to see a lot of shit hit the fan, a lot of change happening, and you watch what's going to happen with Trump, because a lot's going to happen, and that's a good thing for, for all of us. Now, these are all universal numbers. If you want to know your own personal year, what's going on with you specifically, this is where you can contact me because I can teach you. And I can teach you at a very low cost. A numerology, uh, let's say, lesson with me is going to be about an hour. And you know, my, right, my rates are high. Maria is outstanding at what she does with her intuitive work. And, of course, I'm a little more expensive. Well, kind of a lot more expensive. But for lessons, I charge a lot less. So contact me. Send me an email. Just go to my website, monica.com. And I'll send you the information, the list, and everything, and, and the rates and stuff. I don't want to say them over the air. You right. know, I think that's tacky. This is your show. Thanks. Exactly. But I want, I want people to understand <laughs> numerology and the impact of this year and how it's going to be uh, really affecting us. Right. So, well, anyway. everything is everything is numbers, you know. When you, uh, oh. when you sent me your little note on the numerology yeah. you yeah. also yeah. put it to the uh the main arcana in tarot <clears throat> and yeah. you talk it about the empress, empress you know and that's like when i see that in somebody's reading that's like one of the best cards they could possibly have ever can you explain empress at all or well when you look at the empress i mean she's just overflowing she's overflowing with everything good she is mother earth Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and when major cards show up in somebody's spread in a in a huge amount of, of numbers, because usually a spread is about 13 cards, sometimes I've actually seen people that'll have as much as nine from the major arcana in their mm -hmm. spread. And that always tells me, you know, that's going to be fantastic for them. And that you have a lot of beings uh, around you, a lot of beings in spirit that are also helping you along the way. Mm -hmm. But what I'm finding is right now, everybody seems to be very impatient. I don't know if you're finding that or not. Oh, uh, yeah. Some of, my, some of my own dear friends, you know, they're not only impatient, it's like they're waiting for their lives to start. 
And, and not only impatient, but I'm also hearing from people that they don't feel they have any more reason to stay on the planet and they don't oh, want to be Oh, my here. gosh. You're going to regret that if you decide to do something like that because it's up to us to change individually. And, and Maria and I, off the air, we were talking about, let's talk about relationships the one with ourselves and the one with other people. And I thought, wow, what a great idea, you know? And I was, as I was looking at this number three, I, I noticed that they took a little bit from Don Miguel Ruiz's book called The Four Agreement, which I absolutely love. It says, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. I believe that we have to change on the inside. People are waiting for what? We're the creators of what? We are the creators of our reality based on what we're thinking, feeling, and what we're believing in. So we have to take back our power. Maria, you know that, Oh, right? absolutely. Because Sun Bear used to say it best. He used to say the cemetery is full of people who are still waiting. Oh, my gosh. I know. I remember when I was, like, I think 19 or 20 years old, my mentor said to me, you know, died at 80. No, wait. Di buried at 80, died at, at 30. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the truth, you know, if you're still waiting, you know, people act like they still have time. But, you know, I look around and I hear stories every day, you know, people in their 20s dying, you know, a freak accident, this and that. So if you're not living today exactly the way you want to live it, you have no guarantee of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Michael Rekia, who's also a co-host of the show, says, the main reason we're here and what we need to keep in mind every day is we're building our next house. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is that a lot of people don't realize how powerful they are. So what they do is they become reactors. We become reactors because I know I was caught up in it last week. And I thought, wait a minute, why am I lying to myself about who I am? We, anything that you put after the word I am is how we define ourselves. Like people that are sick will say that they are sick. Instead of saying, I am healthy, I am whole, I am prosperous, I am this, I'm that, I'm love, and all you have to do is say, I'm love, and then that starts to heal the healing process for everything else. But as long as we say, and this message I got from an extraterrestrial, actually, who said, watch the word you say after the word, I am. Right. Because even in the, you know, I had to study the Bible as well, too, being an ordained minister, you know, God described it itself as the I am. Mm -hmm. Never said male, it said I am. And so everything we say after I am is how we define ourselves. And if we say that you're broke or that you're this or that you're lacking or that you're, you know, a, a loser or that you can't find a mate or whatever, all that's going to become true because it also says in Scripture, it is done unto you as you believe. So our beliefs are extremely important, but we're keep, we keep thinking the wrong thoughts. And it's very easy to be very, like, let's say, tripped up and have the carpet pulled out from underneath us by watching the news. All right. Well, I People, hope that doesn't happen to you Listen to my show. I like to think my humor keeps you, uh, keeps you out of that fear. Oh, by all means, you're the only show people should listen to. Oh, because thanks. not only do you tell the truth, and you do it in such a humorous way, too, because of the absurdity of it. But you empower people, Maria, and, you know, my, my goal, as I was, I was just uh, emailing David Icke, uh, he sent me an email explaining certain things that are happening on the planet, because there's certain things I can't understand, you know, because I'm so into my work, like, I, like what's this Brexit all about, what's going on with Theresa May, you know, and then I said, what, are there any, like, honest people on this planet that are politicians, and he explained exactly how it worked, so thank God I have that connection to him, because he gives me some insight about exactly how it's working, and it saves me a lot of time from reading, uh, you know, his long, long books, which are outstanding, but sometimes I don't have time, you know? Right, they are, and they are huge, they're always they're usually huge, like yeah. two but inches thick. There's some thick. really good stuff in there. Oh, absolutely. So, any, so anyway, he was telling me what was going on, and I thought, okay, thanks for, for the understanding, because I was clueless, you know, and so it does, be, it does start off, he says, you know, Monty, he goes, I have the solution at the end of each of, of my books. So I tell people now, if you get David Icke's book, read the last chapter first. <laughs> then go back to the beginning because the answer and the solution to all of this is in the last chapter of every single book, which is we are love, and that's the only reality there is. Everything else is an illusion. Right. So in order not to be controlled by that illusion, look at where you are. The number three this year is really going to help out, but we have to do our part. We can't be waiting for something to happen. That's as absurd as wanting to have rose bushes and strawberries and tomatoes growing in your backyard, but you forgot to plant the seeds. 
Exactly. Exactly. I mean, well, also in all fairness, and I'm sure you 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 know this, uh, my intuition also gives me a very clear view of the news. So oh, you know, I'm really giving people the news with spiritual views, as uh, one radio uh, one radio producer had referred to my show. He says, "You're like the only one I know doing the news with spiritual views." Yeah, and you can explain the why. And that's what I do with each one of my clients as well. This is what's going on. This is why. This is what you need to do. So our work becomes very solution-oriented, which is what people need because we forget who we are. My gosh, you know, it's right. like if we if just tell, stop believing all the bullshit about yourself, all the stuff that we tell ourselves about ourselves is the story we're telling ourselves, and it's all based on the past. You know, the past only repeats itself if we don't learn the lessons from it. So anytime something happens and people go, why did this happen to me? And I'll say, it happened for you, right. not to you. Right. Well, if I catch one of my associates or friends, you know, putting themselves down, I, I tell them, I don't like you talking about my friend that way. Yeah. So, you, kind of, I, you know, I, I'm constantly catching people and, and correcting them, especially when they're asking for things and they'll, I'll try. Well, try is always doomed to fail, like the word if. So, you yeah, know, we I have totally to be... I agree. I mean, this is why Yoda said there is no try, you either do or do not. That's right. Do or die. Do or die. Uh, so, I love I, Yoda. Empire Strikes Back, the movie in the, from the 70s. I love uh, Yoda, too. Um <laughs> Here we are in a new year, and I know a lot of people have put a lot of uh, New Year's resolutions out there. I wanted to know what your, um, what your feeling is about uh, resolutions. Um, I don't do them because, I, I, again, you're, you're putting out something from the outside, like, you know, you want to lose weight, you want to do this, you want to... When we're aligned on the inside and we are love, all that stuff falls away, our, our bodies automatically heal, we start for some reason thinking really good thoughts, and we start making better choices, in other words, we remove the blocks from ourselves when we put ourselves first, so the only resolution we should have is honor thyself, know that you are love, um, period. Exactly. Period. All well, the other stuff is just, you know, goals, but those goals take care of them. What's so weird is that when we do this, we become the magnet for everything and everyone that we need to come into our lives uh, to manifest the reality. Because when, when we're in a state of love, we are magnets. We draw to ourselves what we need. We don't have to wonder how. The word how is the most dangerous question we can ask ourselves. Well, how is this going to happen? Who's going to do this? What if it doesn't? That's all left brain crap. Well, but it's like a lot of... It's like a lot of uh, codependent people that don't even realize they're codependent, who are still waiting for someone else to fix their life. Do not wait for anything. Take initiative. Take the first step. Right now, it's so simple. If you're in a bad place and you're listening to this, I want you to start by saying, I am love, period. That is what, that's who I am, and I'm empowered by that. Or just say, I am love. And every moment of the day, no matter what's going on, and believe me, I had to go through this last week. Maria, as you know, well, and everybody I say, forgets. I am right. love. I am peace. I am harmony. I am joy. And I, I pulled my angel cards to give me some help because sometimes when we do this work, we're very alone and we don't have other people to contact. Thank God I have you, Maria. Oh, and, <laughs> um, and so what happens is that I utilize tools. One of my favorite tools is the runes, R U N E S, by Ross Blum. Because that's like talking directly to the source, and it tells you exactly what we need to do. Sometimes people need the step-by-step, -step, okay, I need to focus on this today, and that's it. So the angel cards really helped me. And one of the things it kept saying is, play more. Be like the child. Play more. And so I started taking care of the child within me, because we all have a child within us. And I started to reassure her, hey, we're okay. I'm going to take care of you. You're very safe. And I did a visualization of me holding the baby, with, and the baby was me. And I said, you're safe. You're right. fine. Exactly. You're loved. Exactly. And so the healing was like instantaneous. It was a week that was uh, a week of hell. It, it was like a nightmare to me. And all of a sudden, the breakthrough was, remember who you are. Mm. And I thought, gosh, I teach this all the time. How in the world could I have forgotten that? It's very easy. So we do have to constantly remind ourselves every day, here's a step, easy. Step one, when you wake up in the morning, I am love. My heart is connected to the source of love. I am love. Number two, I'm grateful for, and then list at least three things that you're grateful for. End of subject. That's called a prayer. It's, and even the word thank you is a prayer. 
or meditate. I don't think we need to get into 20, 30 minute meditations at all. I think we can keep this to one minute. Absolutely. We don't have time to sit around chanting no place like Om for eight hours a day and think that's going to change, <laughs> change the world. It's not. You know, when I, you know, people were talking to me, you know, at the beginning of the year about resolutions. And I said, you know, they asked me, you know, point blank, do you, did you make any resolutions? And I said, no, why would I set myself up to fail? Why would mm -hmm. I put that kind of pressure on myself? Yeah, and that I is think, exactly right. Yeah, and I think there's a big difference between setting goals, which I only recommend people set short-term goals. Yeah. Uh, because long-term goals put too much pressure on you. And yeah. what I find is most people I talk with and deal with, they're the only ones putting the pressure on themselves. It's yeah. not coming from anybody else. It's them doing it to themselves. And I'm like, man, why don't you just give yourself a break? You know, yeah. just sit back and enjoy. You know, for me, like, you know, I have my own little similar thing I do every morning. First thing is <laughs> after I say, oh, God, I'm back here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but when I'm doing my morning stretches just to wake up the body computer, you know, mm -hmm. if, if, you know, if I'm in a hurry, I'll just say I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. You know, that's corny, mm -hmm. but it covers it. Uh, I also well, will say, you know, the great spirit is to the left of me, to the right of me, in front of me, behind me, above me, beneath me, within me, and all around me. Oh my gosh, I see the same thing. Wow. Right. So to me, I'm protected, you know, and, and I've been reminding a lot of my students and a lot of other spiritual people, in this crazy, chaotic, negative energy world, you now have to put a protection around yourself a minimum of twice a day. Oh, ex ex even when I get in the car, I do the same exact thing. But you know what's another one that's really short that I learned from, of all people, uh, the great basketball player in the NBA, Stephen Curry. He's very spiritual, and he's also, like, one of the best with the Golden State Warriors. He also, he touches his chest and points up. And he, they asked him about that, and he said, what that means is from my heart to God. And every time he makes a basket or a three-point, which he does a lot, um, so I started doing it. You know, like, even when I was feeling really down, I just t tap my heart mm -hmm. and use the left hand. Or the right, the left hand is to receive. The right hand is to send. So I first do it with my right hand. I tap it, and then I point up. And that gesture, even gestures, as you know, symbols and gestures always are received from, from the great I am. So I do it with my right hand, and I point up, and then I point up and bring it with my left hand, and I tap my heart, which means I'm receiving it now. Right. So, such what? a simple gesture that takes like five seconds to do. Right. But all these little things have power. Right. You either run your day or the day runs you. That's your choice when you wake up. So we have to set the tone in the morning. Right. And, you know, talking about gestures, here's something that I've taught, uh, I've taught in a lot of my classes for so many years, and you just reminded me of it. So just so everybody listening knows... We are always totally unscripted, so I think that's what makes the show more interesting because you we trigger each other really well on things I haven't thought about in years. <laughs> but when I used to talk about, you know, a lot of people like to give, you know, the finger, okay? We all know what the finger is, okay? You know, oh, yeah. When you get pissed off in traffic and you flip up your middle finger, what people yeah. don't realize is your middle finger is, your, is called your fire finger. It's your power finger, so when you're flipping somebody the bird, you're literally giving them your power. Wow. So I've I love that. Yeah, so I've told my I've told my, my students, if you kinda of flip somebody off, throw up your pinky or something. <laughs> Don't throw up your middle <laughs> finger. And we all know that when you point with the index finger, there's three fingers pointing right back at us, which oh means God, my whatever you send to out to that. anybody else comes back threefold. My, I don't think there was a day in his life that my father didn't say that to all of us. Isn't that something? <laughs> Just remember, when you point a finger at somebody else, you have three fingers pointing back at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, we get the ragers that call that have a lot of issues, you know, and they think that we're going to, I'm not a psychiatrist, I can't fix the bipolar disorder, that's for your doctor, but yet don't take it out on me, and so, I mean, I had to tell one lady, look, when you're sending out this kind of hatred and this kind of anger, it only hurts you, it doesn't hurt the, the person that you're sending it to, Absolutely. and she hung up on me, so oh. I'm like, whatever. Well, hey, that happens, you know, and look, I, I can't fix people's lives, but I can surely give them the direction, the knowledge, the books to read, the people to listen, what to do. 
Uh, but it's up to them. And I always will remind people, look, you're free to do whatever you want when we yeah. end this session. You know, you know but, what's uh, interesting, Maria, when you said that, it just triggered something in me because, as you know, we bounce. We're both fire signs, so we're like feisty. You know, I'm an Aries, you're Sagittarian, so <laughs> this is why you guys hear us talking over each other. What happens is that, you know, when a person is um, sending out that kind of energy, they're like, again, they're forgetting who they are. They have to realize that, that my gosh, I'm only doing harm to myself. Mm-hmm. This is not... This is not what I want in my life. I mean, why would people want to injure themselves? I, I, I believe we have to release emotions appropriately. You know, we have to. Um, so when they came up for me last week, I just said, you're a liar and you're not within me. So what I did was I said, I send you away. I let you go now, but I fill you with love so that you're not going to hurt the planet. We don't want to send out negativity to the planet, no, I... our stuff. You know, that's like throwing poop at somebody. So um, I always do, where do I do fecal analogies? Isn't that weird? But anyway, so, and then what happens is that you bless it and you say, you are now love and I send you out. And then wherever you were in my being, I replace you with peace, joy, and harmony. I was going to say something else to what you're, you just said, but my mind just completely went blank on it, and this came up instead. So I don't uh-huh. know. What was the last thing you said, Maria? <laughs> <laughs> you expect me to remember what, after listening to you, you expect me to remember what I said. I know. I just, because I bounced, you said something that triggered something in me, but then all of a sudden it went blank. That happens. <laughs> well, I think that sometimes we're just on the same wavelength, and we're like you're so anxious to just share. Yeah. <laughs> that you can't you can't kind of control it but you know when I think about different things to talk about uh when you know with different co-hosts but you know, especially with you I don't really ever need to plan anything because it's like the world gives it to me and, and you know what we do that every single show everybody that's listening everything that you are learning from us is totally unrehearsed, unre- un- unscripted. It's all stuff that comes up in the now, in the moment, intuitively. Right. And, and we bounce off each other so well that um, it seems to be cohesive somehow. <laughs> I know. Anyway, we're going to take a short break, but when we get back, I'm going to talk about the, the conversation we're going to have uh, that was basically handed to me in the gym this week. So stay oh. with us, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Monica Sepulveda of Wake Up with Maria and Monica. You can hear us every second Tuesday of the month. We offer you solutions and tools to help raise your own vibratory frequency. And as we stay in this light of love, we shift ourselves and the planet shifts by itself. No reason to react to the negativity that's going on this planet when we're all so powerful. So why not use it every morning when you wake up? Um, actually, I'm doing this promotion for selfish reasons. I just got to tell you that Maria is probably the best. No, I know. She's the best intuitive reader I have ever met in my life, and she's underpaid. Uh, I mean, check out her prices and check out mine. There's differences. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm a medium. I contact people who've passed on. But this woman is incredibly accurate with her predictions. I've never met anybody so gifted. She's so wonderful as a friend, and I'm humbled to be on her show. Thank you so much, Maria. Sorry I had to plug you here, but I just have to brag about you. You're that good. Take care, everyone, and make it a great day. Bye. Okay, welcome back to Awaken with Maria and Monica, and I'm sure we woke you up because we're all all over the place and all on fire today. I have to tell you, you know, I have the strangest conversations at my gym, you know. Uh Some days I like to go there off hours just to avoid people, but most days I'm happy to talk to them, you know. Yeah. Uh, and this uh, this man was started a conversation with me. We we've, we've talked to each other over the past few years, and I'm willing want to take a guess and say he's probably in his forties, his late forties. Uh, and it, we just started talking about relationships because obviously he is a feeling thinking man, and he's trying to figure out relationships and women. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of the things that he commented to me was that. All the couples he knows, they all know each other, and yet they're all cheating on their mates with the other mates' couples, the other couples' mates. And he just doesn't understand it. So I looked at him and I said, well, but I mean, what are we talking about? Are we talking about people in their 20s? You know, it it depends. How old are these people? And he said, well, some are in their 20s, but it goes all the way up to people in their 50s or 60s. 
and he's looking to me for an answer. And I said to him, that's because people are not honest with each other. Mm -hmm. And we got on the subject of honesty and honesty in relationships and not just male, female relationships or love relationships, but all relationships. You know how many times I sit and I'm watching TV. Uh, it might be a show. It could be a sitcom. It could be a soap opera. I just sit there and say out loud, why does everybody continuously lie to everybody? And themselves. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and you see it all the time. And, and I told him, because he is in a relationship, you know, and we must have talked for over a half hour. I said to him, can you talk to your girlfriend the way you talk to me? And he said, no, I can't. I said, well, then that means you're both not being honest with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can talk to basically a stranger about your most intimate thoughts and details of life, but you can't share that with your partner or your best friend, guess what? You don't have a relationship. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, I don't understand it. I don't know if TV has programmed people to be dishonest with their partners, you know, whether it's done in a jocular way on a sitcom or whatnot. Uh, you know, reminds me of the old sitcoms in the 50s, you know, the perfect family where the dad was the breadwinner and the mother, you know, she was just the ditzy woman that had to do what she had to do. I don't know if that became part of the programming, but I find it very disheartening. Yeah, Donna that, Reed comes to mind. Exactly, or Leave it to Beaver, Leave it to Beaver. or you know, I Father Knows Best, or you know, whatever. Well, at least Lucy showed some guts, okay? Yeah, she did. She was ballsy. Right, and let's, she's a Leo, by the way. Right, let's not forget she was the breadwinner in that family, okay? She yeah. was a genius, and you know, people don't realize she really started that show when she was 40 years old. And he cheated on her all the time. Oh, yeah. And he cheated on her. He was a drunk, you know, blah, blah, blah. But she still got, you know, she still did what she had to do. I think she was a hero in my book. Absolutely. Uh, especially at the time she lived. Mm -hmm. uh, but I said, you know, maybe this is something that we really need to talk about because I do have my relationship book, which is everything I've ever learned about relationships, mine, my clients, my sisters, et cetera, in my entire life. And it's only 60 pages, and people should memorize that book. I keep telling people, don't just get the copy, memorize it. It'll save you decades of heartache. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think one of the most important things is honesty. What's the title of the book? Uh, God, I don't know. I don't even have it in front of me. I think it's... <laughs> Sorry. Well, hold on a minute. I actually have it within an arm's reach. It's uh, Relationships Cutting to the Chase. And, you know, I listed about 30 questions that people that are in any kind of relationship should ask and discuss with their partner before mm -hmm. they get together. Because nobody really knows the other person they're with. How many times do you hear people, after they get divorced, say, I really never knew who he was, or I never knew who she really was? And so talk to each other. I mean, we're not freaking mind readers. Right, but, you know, people have to realize, you know... Not everybody is a psychic and a mind reader. You know, some right. women will complain to me that their husbands don't do what they want. Well, did you tell them what you want? No. Well, no. you know, be fair. He's not a psychic. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa. Uh, but I think we got into a point where everybody, for whatever reason, thinks that other people are responsible for taking care of their needs. Oh, absolutely. Just like that movie, you know. Uh, it show me the money. It says uh, you complete me. I, I I ready to throw up when I heard that you complete me. Really? <laughs> and people thought that was romantic. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know, I I got to take a, a cue from John Bradshaw, who you and I have discussed oh, before. Love you. Uh, yes. But when John Bradshaw talked about relationships, he was so correct. He said, if you are, let's say you're a, uh, a bird with a broken wing, you can only attract a bird with a broken wing. If you, and he was talking about codependency. Yeah. And he says, a real healthy relationship is two people who can stand side by side, not looking at each other, but yeah, standing side by side, side by side and looking forward together. Okay. Yeah, put the problem in front of you, not in the middle of you. Because then there's a tug of war. I think that book is called The Family, isn't it? I think it might be called The Family or The Family Secret. Who remembers? There were so many. I read them all. Yeah, I remember the red cover, though. Right, but I would like to let people know if you still have a library in your town, 
you know, the libraries carry all his work for free uh, in books, yeah. DVDs, tapes, you name it. Uh, so a lot of times I recommend that to a lot of my clients. You know, I, I will know, intuitively know what book they need to read. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And then if they really like it, you can buy a used copy at Amazon for like two bucks. Exactly, exactly. But the other thing people need to realize, and it's a sad thing, but true, because I hear a lot of people say, oh, my family is just so dysfunctional. But I tell them every family is dysfunctional. There's just different levels of it. Yeah, because we come back together and reincarnate in order to overcome whatever problems we had in past incarnations, and it's all resolved with love. You know, I always tell my, my, uh, my clients, too, because I've been doing this work since 1972 professionally, and... Uh, God, that's almost 47 years. Jeez. So, you know, what I th there's six or seven things we must have in order to have longevity in healthy relationships. Number one, integrity, respect, loyalty, good communication, friendship, uh, similar spiritual values. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to say before by saying that. And then you start looking at things that are in common, such for me. I mean, I look at these things, but if a man came into my life who was a hunter and killed animals, that's a deal breaker because that's number seven for me. I love animals so much that a person that is an animal killer, I would say, bye. All right. So if you look at those six to seven things and you honor it, I, I always say to people, look, if those things are not in alignment and you don't share the same values or character traits, it's not going to last. And you can actually look at each one of them and rate your, your mate one to ten on each point, and you'll be able to see where the problem is in the relationship. Communication is a huge one, but so are the other. Exactly. A lot, this is what I was going to say. I forgot. I, I just remembered. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is because you triggered something in me. A lot of people say to me that they're spiritual, and I'll look at them and I'll say, no, you're not. And they get so offended. Yes, I am. I said, you know a lot about spirituality, but it has nothing to do with what you know. It sh it, spirituality is how we live our lives. Exactly. Execution. It's action. It has nothing to do with what you know. Oh, I said, yeah, you said that you're so spiritual, but all you do is worry and fear and doubt and call yourself names. And the story you tell yourself about your life is bullshit. I said, if you were really spiritual, I'd have, you'd have faith, you would have love, you'd have, you'd love yourself, number one, because that should be the first priority. You wouldn't have any self-doubt. You'd have confidence and you'd trust the process and you'd be patient and, under, and let it unfold. That's what true spirituality is. It's what you do, not what you know. That's what I was going to tell you. Absolutely. Well, it's the same old adage, actions speak louder than words. It's like when people want to argue religion with me. First of all, never try to argue religion with a Jehovah's Witness before, <laughs> during, or after. <laughs> and, and the other thing is, you know, I just look at them and I say, listen, I believe the word Christian is a verb and not a yeah. noun. And it's the same thing with spirituality. You can't just hang a cloak and say, I'm a spiritual person. Well, how do you mm -hmm. live your life? My mother always told me when I was, I remember her saying this at age 12 and I, I, you know, it took me a while to think about it, but I, I got it. She said, who you are, speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, and that's so I one. tell this, these women who always, oh, but he's so wonderful. Did anyone who see that special called Dirty John? Oh my gosh, based on a true story. You can actually download it on Bravo. And it was so good. Again, another one who just paid attention to the words about her relationship with this Dirty John, who was a psychopath con man. It was so good. And then they had his true story on uh, Oxygen, I believe, or another channel. But uh, it was really, women should watch this because they fall prey to these people that just because they charm and say these wonderful words. Who you are, speak so loudly, I can't, can't hear what you're saying. But the series is called Dirty John. Highly recommend it. Well, okay. There you go. Everybody even get a movie recommendation today. It is a series. It's an eight-part series. <laughs> right. Um, I've been watching some different series. I've been watching on the Making of the Mob series on the History Channel. Love I find those. it fascinating. I don't, have, do, do they have a season three yet or no? Do you know? No. I've been, I have already got through the one for New York, and now I'm looking at the one through Chicago. With Chicago. My, yeah, with my, last year with my spirit guide, Al Capone. And I'm like, wow, Al, I said, you're even worse than I thought. I love you even more. <laughs> but, but hey, that's just the Italian in me. And you I was very happy. I was very happy. 
Do you remember that series on, on HBO called A Boardwalk Empire? I loved it. Oh, yeah. They wove his, his story right into that. Too. I thought that was great. But it was oh, good yeah. to see Deidre Capone in the series because I interviewed her on her book that she wrote about her uncle. Uh, so it's kind of fun for me. You know, every now and then, I the other a week or so ago, and I, everyone should watch it, another film called Eating Animals. You can watch that on Netflix. But what was interesting is when I watch movies like that, it, I, I always enjoy seeing so many of the people, the doctors, the environmentalists, the activists that I've had on my show. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it just gives me joy. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So so let's get. Yeah, you said to me off the air one time. You said I trust I trust these guys much more than politicians. Yes. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Too bad they're not running the country. They do a better job. But yeah. <laughs> well, they did help out big time in World War II. But that's history nobody talks about. Uh, anyway, let's get back to uh, honesty. I think that it doesn't just pertain to relationships outside yourself. I don't think that a lot of people are honest with themselves. Exactly, yeah. The story we tell ourselves in our head about ourselves is all BS and they're all lies. All right. I mean, you know, sometimes I can, you know, I'll have a client and they'll sound so up and so happy and so together. And then I'll lay out their cards and take a look at their timeline. And then I'll say to that, I'll tell them right off, because, you know, I don't know how else to be except a straight talker. I'll say, you know, you're coming across and acting like everything's so great in your life, but I see so much stress in your life, it's a wonder you haven't had a heart attack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, that's my style of reading. I know. And <laughs> you know, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh <laughs> But then they'll open up and they will be honest with me because I caught them in that in that lie. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. and, and I've told, believe me, I've had to tell countless people in the past, you know, as far as I know, readings are not mandatory in the state of Arizona, so why are you lying to me? Okay, if you're going to lie to me, we're not getting anywhere, you know. Yeah. And, and I want to give people, you know, the best bang for their buck. I want to give them the best possible uh, probabilities they have based on their, you know, their Akashic record. Yeah. Uh, but people have to start, honesty starts with yourself, just like love starts with yourself. Exactly. You know, everybody's out there looking for love, looking for love in all the wrong places. But the truth of the matter is these people, and, and, and you know, I have a really good friend who's going through this because she got divorced and, and she's so used to having been married uh, that she just thinks another man is going to solve all her emotional problems that she suffered since the divorce. And I told her, it, you're not ready for another man, okay? You have so much. You have to clear off your energy field to be healthy and together mm -hmm. enough to draw a healthy partner well, you're going to draw the same kind of guy. Well, you know what? You know, that's exactly right, Maria. You know, I, I always say we don't attract what we want. We attract who we are. Right. So it's like we buy into the Disney fairy tales of, you know, Cinderella or whatever. It's like, oh, my gosh, the damage it does. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, wasn't there a book years ago? What was it called? The Cinderella Complex? Oh, yeah. You're right. 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 So, you know, there's no white knight. You know, nope. there's no knight in shining armor. Actually, it's a great song by Trace Atkins that everybody should listen to. And I'm not promoting country music, although I do like him. And it's basically, that's the, uh, yeah, basically the words are, there's no knight in shining armor. You know, mm -hmm. all I can do is give you love. I'm just a person. You uh, know, uh, I got to say this because it just popped in my head. Of course, like everything else, I'm telepathic. What, what comes to mind right now is that not only do we get who we are, but every single relationship that we're in is actually the right relationship, even if it's a negative one, because it's trying to point out where we need to change within ourselves in order to create a better relationship. Because if we attract an abusive person, then we're abusing ourselves. If we're attracting a person who's smothering us and is not being loving but is controlling, then we're controlling ourselves. Each person is an out picture or a mirror of what's going on within us. So in actuality, we don't have failures. We only fail to learn what needs to change within us since we created it in the first place. Right. Well, that's interesting because now you tripped another trigger of another conversation. Believe me, these, <laughs> these conversations happen between men at my gym. 
the women and I, we talk about politics. Everything else is, uh, the men start these conversations. So I overheard two of the guys were talking, and they were talking about bu a bucket list, okay? And one of them yells across the room to me, hey, Marie, do you have a bucket list? And I said, no. And they said, what do you mean, no? I said, I've done everything I want to do. And they were stunned, and they looked at me. They said, you mean you don't have any regrets? I said, no. I said, because you realize as you get older that even the crappy relationships, the abuse, the horrors you went through your whole life, they, were, they all lead to where you are right now. Exactly. You know, and I said, you know, why do people need a bucket list? You know, why wait until you're ready to die to do what you want to do? Do it now. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, the well, only thing I can do really at this stage of my life is the same thing, either smaller or bigger. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, that's it. You know, living a life without regret. And one of the hardest spiritual principles for people to understand, um, Monica, is that everything is perfect as it is. Especially if we stay in the now. Nothing can hurt us. Well, the now is everything. The now is everything. Because everything is now. Exactly. There is no future. If there's things like Buddha says, I read these all the time. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're at peace, you're in the moment, in the now. Right. And the moment is all you have because everything is happening simultaneously. The future is already happening. The past is still yeah. happening. But we're and right now, like, you I need I to be dialed into to this. When I'm doing a reading, let's say from someone in, in <laughs> Australia, they're 18 hours ahead of me, but yet we're on Skype talking at the same time. So they're talking to the past right. because I'm in oh, yesterday and I'm talking to the future, but it's happening at the same time in the moment. That really kind of is an easy way to, to explain that. Absolutely. And I listen, I have clients in Australia too, and it's always fun trying to figure out a good time for both of us. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wow, definitely. I'm talking to somebody in tomorrow. You're already in tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but that reminds me when I was a kid, you know, I, I, after my near death experience, you know, I was outside playing with my sisters. I'm sure I've said this story before. I hope I'm not boring oh. anybody. But How old were you? In the, I was maybe five. I was too. Oh and, my God. Right. And my sisters and I, I don't know, we were playing Ring Around the Rosie or something. And I just started laughing. And my older sister, who was always terrified of me on some level, said to me, Why are you laughing? Because I said, and I looked at them and I said, Because right now we're old ladies sitting on a porch laughing. <laughs> and yeah, I guess <laughs> my sister was always a little blown away by me, but she somehow <laughs> she somehow managed to adjust. Uh, but you know, these were things I knew as soon as I came back. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't something that you know many kids were privy to in the 1950s. Uh, but, you know, and then, of course, as you get older and you study and you read, even Einstein admitted this is a false reality and that it's, you know, mm -hmm. albeit, he's, as he said, a persistent one. Uh, but today is all we have. And, and, you know, people need to learn to just stay in the moment. Tomorrow takes care of itself. The truth of the matter is, if you had to think about what you were worried about two years ago, you wouldn't be able to remember yeah. So why yeah. spend the time in the past now? You know, the left brain is definitely, I call it the troublemaker and the noise because it always reminds us of things that happened in the past. Whereas the right brain, which is what I, why I teach lessons is for people that switch over to the right hemisphere more because, um, what happens is the right brain gives us directions and it gives us ideas of what we can do and it can lie. It's not capable of lying. The left brain brings up all the old emotions and old experiences, and people tend to listen to that because that's how we're raised. So the right brain can do that. And, I show, and I'll give you a real quick way right now to start accessing the right brain. All you do is shift your body weight to the left side, especially if you're, um, for instance, waiting in line to pay for groceries. Put all your, energy, uh, put all your uh, weight on the left side of your body. Start picking things up with your left hand. Start doing more things with the left, and that triggers the right brain. Simple, simple lesson. Right, exactly. Yeah, because the right brain controls the left side of the body, and the left brain controls the right side of the body. I'm left-handed, but I do, I only write with my left hand, and I do everything else with my right brain, which means I'm using both hemispheres. Right. Well, I'm left-handed too. There's another thing we have in common. Oh gosh, really? <laughs> I had to go get my 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 right arm adjusted this week, and my chiropractor said, "Oh, this could just be a little carpal tunnel from using the mouse." And I said, and I looked at her, and I said. 
I'm left-handed and it's not my wrist. It's like, <laughs> it's my forearm. So she snapped it back into place and I was happily on my way. Oh. I do, I do want to let my listeners know I have a great interview still in the archives. I don't remember her name because I've interviewed thousands of people in the past 20 years. Uh, but put in Don't Worry or Worry in the search bar. I think her book was called Why Worry. And she has facts and figures in there. And she truly said, and I believe her, 80% of what we worry about never happens. So why That's worry? Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Right. So worrying is a waste of time. There's certain emotions that can fuel your fire, which is great. But worry, blame, guilt are totally useless emotions. Uh, yes. And the easiest way to stop feeling them is to stop using those words. Yes. You know, years ago when I studied with Sunbear, he says, guilt and blame are a waste of emotions. He said, throw them out of your vocabulary and you'll never feel them again. And he was right. He's right. You know, I always tell people if you can't get rid of that word, or no, can't means won't, actually. Substitute the word worry for the word concern. It's actually better because the, the definition of worry is an absence of faith. Right. And a definition of fear is an absence of love. Duh. Right. You know, and here's an acronym, false evidence appearing real or false emotions appearing real. Right. And you have another acronym for it, don't you? Uh, forever experiencing an alternative reality. There you go. <laughs> Which, believe me, this is an alternative reality. There's a lot better places to travel to than this one. But right now, this is where we are. And you know are. what? When you talk about, you know, to say, I am love, it reminds me of that speech that Tom Hanks' character gave in the movie Philadelphia. Oh. It was one of the most beautiful speeches. It was right before he died where he's having a private party, him and Denzel Washington. He's got the IV in his arm, and he starts talking about I am love and what he is. And it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in, in the movies. Uh, but if, if you guys have never seen that movie, I highly recommend it. Uh, but that one scene is just amazing. And he's got opera playing in the background. And if you're not like crying all over the floor, there's something wrong with you. Uh, but I, you know, there are certain passages in different movies that are just very touching and very explanatory of what we are as humans. You know, earlier, Monica, you talked about remember who you are. Yeah. When I tell people that and I put it in writing, I copy Linda Goodman's way of writing and I hyphenate, re-hyphen, member who you are. I have her book. Right. So, you know, remember all the beings you ever were. I mean, this is what Ascension is about. Remembering yeah. everybody you ever were, everybody you ever will be, your parallel selves, and bring them forth right here, right now in this lifetime. I love that, Maria. That's fantastic. Wow, I don't know where that came from, but there it is. Uh, but, <laughs> well, because I've had so many people recognize who I am or was from past lives or whatever, people I actually respect. And yeah. I don't get into that. And I'm like, listen, I'm having a hard enough time just being Maria Heller right now, okay? <laughs> but I can see where a lot of, a lot of my, my aspects of me come from. And it's not just from that little Brooklyn Italian girl. Oh, no, it's definitely a lot of past life stuff, and I love to show people how to access past life. One of the best ways you can access a past life, if you want to know, this is really, really simple. Ask to dream about it, and it will come through. If it doesn't come through the first night, just keep asking. I want to see my past life that really has affected and stopped me from having everything I need in this lifetime. I want to see it. Sometimes you'll realize that it might be karmic, right. but there's divine, you know, um, what do you call it, divine order, where you can actually let go of faulting yourself for something that you did in the past. Don't ever fault yourself. Just forgive yourself. Right, but a lot but of... I found, well, right. I found that by my dreams, I really learned a whole lot about what I had done in the past, which really blew my mind, right. and I actually got rid of it. Well, when I read for people, usually, you know, a lot of people want to know about their past lives. You know, I don't want to hurt their feelings and say, if any of us were saints, we wouldn't be here again. But, you know, usually when I read for them, you know, listen, some people have had thousands of past lives. Yes. Maybe I'll pick up one, two, maybe three. And the ones that show up are the ones that are affecting this life. Yes. 
you know, you, I, I don't care too much to do so much past life regression when I tell people, why not do a future life progression? Yeah. And I love yeah. doing those. Who are you going to be next? What's your life like next? Because yeah, that, that's called future pacing according to what I had learned. Uh -huh. And there's several ways to actually access us. I'd love to talk to you sometime and find out how you do it. Oh, okay. I have, of course, we all have tools that come to us, you know, and I love sharing. Oh, so do I. Well, we've shared all we can share for today because our time's up, Monica. Oh, no. <laughs> it's so fast. I know. It does speed on by. But I want to thank you, and uh, who knows what we'll talk about next month, but I'm sure it'll be fun and it'll be interesting, and uh, maybe I should get the gym to pay for my uh, membership just for the chit-chat I get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my human interaction for the day, so I always have my ears pierced there. They're always listening in. <laughs> Always looking for a segue. That. Thank you, Maria, so much. You're very uh, welcome. It's always an honor to be on the air with you. I just adore you. Thank you. I love you too, doll. We'll talk soon. And thanks, everyone, for listening today. <laughs> Take care, babe. Bye. Check out Monica's work at Monica with two N's dot com. And thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. As you can tell, we did. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you for listening and supporting The Maria Show. Tell others what you learned today. Knowledge becomes wisdom only when it's shared. Encourage others to subscribe today. www.maria.net Often imitated, never duplicated. A world of information all in one place. www.maria.net Always ahead of the curve. Always on your side. Get active or get radioactive. Subscribe today.